What's good everybody, it's your boy Hamza from Arthur Gaming and today guys, I'm coming to you with a super spicy deck profile that's very close to my heart. But before we get into the video guys, I'd like to thank you all for subscribing to the channel, helping us get close to that 2k mark. It really means a lot guys. Make sure you guys stay subscribed because we'll be doing an awesome giveaway at 2,000 subscribers. So without further ado, let's get straight into the deck profile, shall we? So starting off the deck profile guys, of course we're playing the one Armageddon Knight, super standard to the deck. You're going to be tutoring this card out as much as you can and you're going to be abusing as much. There's nothing else to explain. If you want a proper explanation, check out all the tens of thousands of videos we've already done on it. Um, we play the one Dark Greffer as well, just because Greffer is another Armageddon Knight, um, and he's a combo piece in Excel in himself, sorry, and he's an extender as well. If you open a level seven or like a level five or higher Dark Monster, again, no explanation needed. That's the Heart and Soul. And you play the three uh, Vision Hero Violins, super standard as well. Um, you want to see these cards because they do uh, start your combo. Any two warriors is full combo in this deck, and that's really important. Um, and then we're playing the two militias just to round off the triple violence. As well as if you open the Armageddon Knight, you can dump the militias as well and just full combo into the Assault, and that's it. Other than that, these cards are just very well-rounded. Like, if you see the Armageddon Knight already as your opening play, like, you can just either get the Greffer or the Vion and just dump militias as an extender as you don't really use these cards in the combo. Um, and that's it for the Dark Starters slash Extenders. And now we're going into some more starters. We're playing the three Space Connector and the double Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. Um, these cards, again, are super standard. You'd rather open these cards than the Armageddon or the Vion just because it's ripping a card out of your opponent's hand. And as, uh, as long as they play with less cards, it gives them a lower probability of them to break your board. So you don't really care about that. Uh, I was thinking about upping Aqua Dolphin to three in a 60 card deck, but this deck is 50 cards. So you kind of have the room to play only two Aqua Dolphins. And you don't really want to open the card in your hand as it's not that good. And we don't really play the dangers because they're not warriors and they don't extend your plays. So that's it for the Space Connector. So again, more starter cards. Then for the Extenders, you play uh, my standard Triple Junk Forward. Triple Photon Butter Spy, or Blue Mountain Butter Spy, sorry. And then the uh, Double Photon Thrasher. Um, these cards, you guys can see in my other deck profiles, I love these cards as the extenders. I don't play Red Layer because Borders are a problem. And with these Guru decks that I've been dueling against and these other stun decks, they have been playing Border. And you just pass a Photon Thrasher, out it, and they can't really do anything about it. Or if they don't out it, uh, you kind of bait out back row and stuff like that. So Photon Thrasher is really, really nice. Even against Ultra Geist, you can special summon Photon Thrasher, swing at Silk. They bounce Photon Thrasher, main phase 3 special again because now hard ones return. Um, and yeah, like, nothing here. These cards, like, sure, Butter Spy and Thrasher conflict with each other, but the odds of you drawing all these other normal summons that I just previously showed you are very high, so you shouldn't really worry about that. And Butter Spy is a dark monster, so you can pitch it off of Greffer if you have an extra one in your hand. Um, and then one other extended I play is the Crusader Arborea. If you guys seen in my other deck profiles, I really love this card. This card's really been coming... Uh, through for me in testing when I would make an assault play and I would mill and it would be negated You can just summon circle out the Armageddon Knight and then uh, you can summon circle out the Armageddon Knight by targeting the Arborea and just make a power tool and then banishing it Sure it puts you behind because you don't have access to the Steam the Cloak But you still have access to the Zephyros which is equally as good and it is a level 3 tuner So it's really important in your Brionac plays and your uh, Yazzie slash power tool plays Then moving on we're playing some more dark warrior uh, dark cards uh, we're playing the Blackwing Engine. Uh, like I said in multiple times, DDR and Power Tool is the best version to play this deck. You shouldn't really be playing it any other way. Um, and these cards just help you get to that. Zephyros enables you to loop DDR and use Armageddon Knight two to three times every, literally every opening hand. And Steam the Cloak helps you push because the token's really, really abusive and you just get all sorts of pluses for absolutely no reason. Then for the PK cards, I've upped the count. I'm playing. Uh, one cloak and two boots. Usually I play the one and the one, but you kind of want to open boots in your hand now I didn't I didn't want to play it at three just because you want to see multiple in your hand But I did want to play the one two because you actually want to open this card because this helps you ladder off with your summon stroke to go into the Saryuja play and Sometimes you can dump this card uh, dump the cloak to search the boots and then special the boots and then continue to play off of that so it really just helps you overall get to the play and it's, re it's really helpful in my personal opinion I think you guys should definitely test it out um, I tested gloves. I didn't. I don't think gloves came up as much as the boots did. So, I really love the ratio that I'm playing now. 
Then I took more like tech cards. I'm playing two Radiance. Just because you don't want to auto lose against other Azlot decks going first. And Radiant gives you the option to really out the board. It is also a level 5 or higher Dark Monster that you can pitch off of Greffer if you go first. So it's not really a brick. And going second, it just helps you uh, out big monsters and then board load it. And then they, they can't Kaiju you turn two. Uh, so yeah, it, it, Radiant is what it is. My favorite Kaiju of all time. So there's that. Then you play the one Distrudo and the one Mirror Mirror, of course, because these, uh, this is very crucial to the combo, the Distrudo. And the Mirror Mirror just helps you OTK with like uh, uh, Brio bounce everything, then go into like a board load out their other card and then take full control of the game. And Distrudo is very, very crucial to the combo. And the fact that you can use it from your hand or graveyard helps you because it's not really a brick if you open it because you can just pitch with Greffer. And then the last Spice card of the deck, the reason why this deck functions is Amorphage Goliath. Basically what this card does is it just locks your opponent out from special summon from your extra deck. It also locks you out as well. But basically, you're just going to set up your board before you do it. So basically, what it says is it says neither player can special summon monsters from the extra deck other than Amorphage monsters. And nobody plays Amorphage monsters in their extra deck. Right? Like, that's that's literally the theory behind the deck. So what you do is, as you'll see in the combo later, you summon the Destrudo, you'll make the LP, and then LP will bring out Goliath. So you'll make your full board, and then you'll summon the Goliath after, and you'll lock him out. And you'll have full-on protection with these cards, as you'll see later on. So it'll be really difficult to out Goliath. And most decks just sort of lose to this. Like, Sky Striker just auto-lose to this. Other uh, Link Spam decks lose to this because they just can't get to the extra deck. The only decks that sort of don't lose to this are Sub-Terrors, but they're Sub-Terrors, so they're inherently going to lose to themselves anyways. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. So that's it for the monsters. Then moving on, I'm playing my standard Equip Spells. I'm playing three DDRs because Power Tools is broken in this deck. I'm playing the one Axe of Fools. If you see anybody, see anybody else playing this Axe of Fools, you know I put them on that. Um, everybody plays Autonomous Action Unit, and I've been saying Axe of Fools is broken. It really helps you even if you're going second, you can out the Azathoth boards. Um, not as good, but you can still get a big beater to run over the Azathoth, and then if they fog wade you, they're going to have trouble out in the fog wade. So yeah, once again, shout out to myself for thinking of the Axe of Fools. Uh, the one Overdone Burial, because I think it's really important, and there aren't any more extenders to play. Divine Sword, Heart and Soul of the deck. Our future, super self-explanatory and living fossil. Um, nothing to change about these really. These cards are all super crucial, and our future has actually gone up in personal gain and value because you can literally just pop two backward cards against these Salmon Gates and these um, Strikers and Alter Geist and Sub Terror decks. So it's very important, and you shouldn't really change this lineup at all. If you want to play the Action Union, you can, but I think life points are really important. And you're paying half your life points and you're paying 400 as well with Zephyro. So you can't really afford to be giving up any more life points because cheese players like Lily Bell and Hayate players will take advantage of that. Um, On to the best extender I think of the deck. I'm playing triple Instafusion. Um, Instafusion is a really, really good card because you can just rage and book their monster if you're going second. If you're going first, it's just another body on board. And you can actually get to a soul without your normal summon, which is really, really good. Um, it's like the Electrum Turbo deck where it's like you want to turbo out Electrum as fast as possible. You want to do the same thing with Soul. You want to just turbo out Soul as fast as possible and just combo off and just win the duel from there. And if Soul resolves, it's over. So, yeah, Instafusion just helps you get there. Of course, you're playing combo decks. You're playing Triple uh, Call by the Grave. Very strong card. Very well-rounded card. Helps you deal with hand traps. If you open Call by the Grave with Connector, you're literally Gumblaring them for three cards in their hand. RP Gumblar. You're literally ripping three cards out of their hand. You're going, couple of the game, rip a card in their hand. They're going to hand trap you, so they lose another card in their hand. You go Connector, Aqua Dolphin, rip a card in their hand. Then you Reborn it, and then you do it again. And if you open Connector, it just makes the combo really smooth or any other extender. And Call of the Game lets you assure that you're going to win the game. And even if you're doing against decks like the sub tier deck, you can actually Call by the Game the Fiendus and stop their play as well. So, really good. It has uh, many applications as well in the Salmon Game matchup. You just Call by the Game whatever monster you're trying to bring back from the graveyard. Then I'm playing the one Foolish Burial just because it's an extender in itself. You normal summon Vio and it gets ashed. You go Foolish Burial, Malicious, combo off. Simple as that. Um, Rusty gets ashed. You can still Foolish Burial the PK monster to get the spell card that's more important to you. Uh, the one Reinforcing Army because it's a god card. Literally searches you any monster in your deck. Um, it just helps you combo. One Monster Born because Soul Charge is banned. So you want to bring as many extenders as possible. And Monster Born, Living Fossil, letter. Are just broken and overdone burial also lets you pitch the radiant kaiju from your hand so that's it for the one ofs then for the pk cards i'm playing one rank up magic launch just because i think as a thoughts uh super broken and it's hard for people to play around this and this isn't even the primary objective of the deck this is actually the secondary objective of the deck um and then you'll see 
I'm playing the one Shade Brigandine because you need the level four and it helps you with your Redure plays if you don't really want to just go into the launch play or it gets interrupted, you can just sit on the Redure. Play the one Fog Blade because the standard combo ends you on the Fog Blade with um, your other cards as well. And it'll end you with this card as well. So this is the main card, Phantom Knight's Wing. Basically what it does is you target one monster you control, it gains 500 attack and also the first time it would be destroyed, it's not destroyed. Um, and I believe also, yeah, so that that's about it. It just gives you protection and it gives you the 500 attack boost. So it helps you protect your Goliath as well. So the standard combo, you're going to be ending with the Fog Blade and the Wing. So if they have any main deck monster that can out the Goliath, you just Fog Blade it. And if you are sort of afraid of it, you can just get the launch instead and you can just do the full on as thought play and just auto win the deck if you don't think that um, Goliath is enough. So that's it for the main deck. I'm playing 50 cards. Um, moving on to the side deck, we play the Link 1s. We're going to do the one Link Rebo. Super standard. You can use Steam tokens with this, so it just helps you uh, round out your combo. And the one LP. LP is the new uh, Guard Dragon card that we got from Savage Strike. It came with the archetype. Basically, what LP does is lets you special summon one Dragon Monster from your deck or your hand to a zone uh, two Link Monsters point to. So in the combo, I'll show you that you're going to have a Saryuja pointing down with an LP. So you can summon the... Uh, Goliath and as well as if you open the Goliath you can just summon Goliath from your hand so it's not really a dead uh, combo card and that's another main reason why I'm not playing the dangers because I don't want the cards in the graveyard so that's it for the link ones for the link twos I play the one space insulator because mirror, mirror tokens as well as steam the cloak tokens help you get into this and you do this when you ladder into the rusty play and the best link two of all time is sold um is sold is just like she she's the heart and soul of the deck like if you get to a sold and it's uninterrupted you literally just win the duel um, and most decks can't really compare to it. It's like you're literally just making a Goki board. It's an unbreakable board. You lock your opponent out and you set up multiple negates. The um, they can't play through it. That's it for the Link 2s I play. Then for the Link 3s, I play probably two of the strongest Link monsters in the history of Link format. I'm playing Summon Sorceress. Like, she's so problematic. Like, she just uh, causes so many issues to the to the game. And, of course, there's, like, Ghost Ogre and cards that can stop it. But Summon Sorceress in herself is a very, very powerful card. Um, it sold like literally any two cards, tutors out some sources. All these decks are playing it now. I think it's it's really really important in link format as well to have some sources. So maybe you don't hit it. And she's been dodged the man list, so maybe she doesn't hit. And then the fan knights of Rusty Bardish or Bardichi or Bardik, however you want to say it. This card's insane as well. Literally on the same power level as summon sources. The amount of shenanigans you can do with this card is just so insane. And I think that Rusty should probably get banned list checked or maybe one of the fan cards they can tutor out because this card literally tutors out like any fan card in your deck it's the reason why as thoughts even a real deck so or card so you should definitely konami should definitely be looking at that card to hit that's it for the link threes i play two then for the link fours you're playing one borlo dragon i'm not playing borlo sword dragon because ot king is fine but i think controlling is very important and being able to summon borlo dragon like most decks can't out this card believe it or not um, Alter Guys has a trouble has trouble out in this card. Subterrors have trouble out in this card. Um, Salmon Gates have trouble out in this card. Like they need to summon their own Borlord Dragon just out it. And if that they're doing that, then they're not really setting up their uh, intended combo that they want to do. So Borlord helps you with that. Uh, I, like you play Borlord Sword if you want, but again, this deck is fairly budget, and Borlord just goes on with the theme of budget. And Borlord just helps you control the game. It lets you steal Colossus. You can Kaiju Colossus. And then you can Borlo take the other Colossus because Thunder Dragons actually lose to Colossus if they're not playing the Dangerous, so that's that. And then the last Link 4, you play a Saryuja Skaldred. She's very important to the combo because she's the pointer down. So you'll have um, Saryuja pointing down and you'll have Guard Dragon LP pointing this way. So you'll have two monsters, so you'll be able to summon the um, Goliath from the deck. So Saryuja is really important and she's a dragon as well, so it doesn't fall under the LP restriction, so you don't get blown up by that. Uh, that's it for the link monsters then of course you play the one invoke region um very important to the insta fusion obviously you shouldn't be playing anything else dragona sucks um carbonal warrior is cute but he sucks too um rage is the best because he helps you out boards going second then for the synchro monsters you play the one brionac because you're playing the yazi and yazi helps you tutor a mirror that helps you get to brionac to out their board because you're always gonna have at least two or three cards in hand those two or three cards are very important like they'll have graveyard effects stuff like that like even going second, like Brio pitches Zephyros just helps you combo off, and it's it's just super strong. 
And then the one power tool dragon, of course, I've been playing this card for like the past two formats. It's just insane. Like all the value they can get you getting one DDR, turning into all sorts of pluses. Like you literally go pl like plus six turn one just because of power tool dragon. And it's really strong. And going second, if you're afraid of the thunder dragon because you can't search, you'd actually go into Yazzie first, uh, attempt to pop and bring up Rio, bounce their cards. And then Mamre will sync her with its, with its tokens to go into power tool dragon. Or you can just go into um, get Knight Destruder into power tool first so or second. So yeah. Then onto the XYZ monsters, I'm playing one Tampi Fridur and one Azathoth. These cards need no explanation. The reason why I'm playing Fridur over Thanatos is that Fridur actually gives you better play. Like it lets you spin cards back. It lets you actually rip cards from your opponent's deck. Um, many times I'll have like a trap monster spell so I can literally do anything I want. And against trap decks, it helps you like, for example, against sub terrors I was dueling and I would summon Tampi Fridur and then I would like, they would twin twisters me and then still in the standby phase, I would go Redoer effect, and I would just take their Solemn Strike from top of their deck. So now, even though I don't have access to Azathoth, I have a Redoer that's a non-targeting Phoenix Wind Windblast, and just putting card back to the top of their deck, and then during my standby phase, I can actually just take the card back. So what I did is I used it, I put their Strike back on top of their deck, and then during my standby phase, I took the Strike back, so I had double interruptions. And then I played the one Star Leech Photon Blast Dragon. The main reason why you play this card is in the combo, if you open one more extender, you can actually make this card on top of all your other cards. So you'll make a Photon Blast Dragon, and he'll be protecting all your monsters with 2,000 more attack. Your opponent can't target cards, uh, monsters you control with 2,000 more attack, and they cannot be destroy your opponents by card effects as well. So you just put him in defense position, he's 2,800 with the Saryuja buff, and he protects your Saryuja, he protects your Goliath, and he protects your Photon Blast itself, and then you get the wings as well. So it's a full layer of protection. It's literally an unbreakable board. Your opponent can't play through it, and they're going to get Goliath locked out of the extra deck, so Pankratops or anything like that can't out it. And even if they summon Pink Tops to 2900, you either Fog Blade the card or they, they kill Photon Blast and then you're Wingsing your Goliath so they can't out it. So yeah, that was the extra deck in the main deck. 15 obviously in the extra deck. Um, side deck, it varies again with your local Mega game. So anyways, we'll go straight into the combos now. All right guys, so now I'm gonna be showing you the best combos the deck can do. Of course you guys are gonna be like, oh, you opened Space Connector and Butter Spy, but of course this is the strongest combo the deck can do. Again guys, this is the strongest combo the deck can do. Any two warriors will amount to something very similar to this, but like I said before, this is the strongest combo. So we're gonna get into the combo. You're gonna go chain link one connector, chain link two butter spy. Uh, right here, um, connector will trigger and it'll summon your aqua dolphin, um, and just like that. So you can use the aqua dolphin. I'm not gonna use it just to show you that these three cards can be anything. You leave the connector on board. You're gonna link the butter spy and the um, connector away into your. It's all two tails of noble knights right here, and you're going to use a soul's effect to mill for cost. You don't search, um, just because you don't want to lose the ogre. But I mean, you awkward dolphin them, so you can do whatever you want. You mill the four least important cards you think you need in this in the matchup, as well as uh, three, as well as the one divine sword. Make sure they go to the graveyard, and the soul will resolve now. Summoning. Your Armageddon Knight and Armageddon Knight will trigger on summon. Basically, what Armageddon Knight will do is you're gonna dump any dark monster, preferably Zephyrus the Elite. Now, like I've shown in multiple cons before, you're gonna banish two warriors, add the Divine Sword to your hand. Leaving the Space Connector on board is really important because you need the four in your hand in order to uh, on the field in order to combo, so you can't really tag out and then rip card your hand. If you don't want to end with Star Leech, you can rip another card in your hand. Of course, it depends on your opponent's hand. But you do banish these um, to get the Divine Sword. You equip the Divine Sword, you bounce with Zephyros, and you special some Zephyros on this side now. And then you re-equip the Divine Sword on the Armageddonite. That's really important. So now you're going to link the Armageddonite and the Isolde into the Broken Link 3 Summon Sorceress, right over here, pointing to Zephyros. Now what you're going to do is you're going to banish the two Warriors, Making sure it's Armageddon Knight and adding back the Divine Sword. Some sorcerers will trigger, or you manually trigger it to target the Zephyros to bring out a uh, Blackwing Steam the Thick Boy right here. And basically, what happens is you're gonna synchro summon Thick Boy and Zephyros away into Power Tool Dragon right here. And Thick Boy will trigger, bring you a token. So the token will be. Like it can be anything. This is the token right here. Token doesn't matter. Now you're gonna trigger power tool effect. 
reveal the triple DDRs that you play in your deck and just get the one. And now you're going to use the DDR, pitching, Divine Sword, bringing the Armageddon Knight right here. So these are your zones. Um, this could be the field center. And Armageddon Knight will trigger. So it's going to dump your Destroyer right here. And now basically what you're going to do is you're going to use Steam's effect in the graveyard to tribute the token to summon itself right here. Now you're going to link Steam and Power Tool away into your Space Insulator. Again guys, these zones are super important, so make sure you don't mess these zones up at all. And Thick Boy will trigger yet again to bring you another token. So the token can be right here. Uh, again, it's a mandatory trigger, so you can't avoid that. Um, now from here, you're going to link Armageddon Knight and Space Insulator away into your Rusty. Good old Rusty, right here. Yeah, I know the pointers are very like awkward. He's pointing away to the side, like not towards anybody, so you can't really use all of his effects. But the main reason why you have Rusty is just to tutor out these cards that I'm going to show you. So you're going to use Rusty effect. And basically what Rusty is going to do is, Rusty is going to set your shade, and he's going to dump your cloak. Rusty's going to dump your cloak. Then what's going to happen is, you're going to link the summon sorceress and the token, not the axe foes, the token away into your Saryuja. Right over here. Now from here what you're going to do is, you're going to um, use the shooter's effect in the graveyard because you still have her. Target the space connector and bring your shooter anywhere. Anywhere here, it doesn't matter. So right here, you're going to set your shade bring a Dean and you're going to activate your shade. And you're going to special summon shade right here. Now you're going to overlay your shade and your connector into your Photon Star Blast Dragon Lord guy. And basically he's protecting all your monsters. Now that you have a level 4 or lower Dragon type monster, you can link it away into your Guard Dragon LP. Basically now what Guard Dragon LP says is she says that if two Link monsters are pointing the exact same place, you can summon a Dragon monster from your deck. And now this gets us to our win con. A Morphage Goliath. And basically, Goliath, like I said before, says no extra deck summoning for you. Nice try. And now, the last piece of the puzzle is you're going to banish your boots to either search your Phantom Knight's Fog Blade or your Phantom Knight's Wing. So, here it just goes up to a personal judgment call. If you think that the uh, Blast Lord is going to be outed, you can grab the wings for additional protection on top of the Goliath. So, right now, they can't target or destroy it by card effects. And he's being boosted to 30... 3050 attack. If you wanted to use this, he would be at 3550 and he would have the protection of card effects and, be, and uh, the attack boost as well. But usually what I would recommend is to get the Fog Blade to actually stop any big monsters that they can summon like a Conductor Tran or something like that. So you would set this as well. So now if we just quickly analyze the board state real quick, we have a Fog Blade. We still have the three cards in hand that we initially started with. These could be any sort of extenders, anything like that. And of course it would change the line of play. We have the Fog Blade, the three cards in hand. We have the Amorphage Goliath that literally says no special summon from the extra deck other than Amorphage monsters. Nobody plays this. This Goliath is being bumped by 300 to 3050 and then being protected by Photon Blast Lord. So they can't target it by card effects or destroy it by card effects. And it's also protecting your Saryuja in itself. And I believe it protects, um, yeah, it's just protecting these two as well. And then you have Fog Blade. And then during your turn, you're going to have these three cards in hand. And any other monster just literally results in game because what you can do is. You just literally have 21, you have the 1,000, the uh, 2750, this will be 21, this will be 28. And Rusty can still trigger because you do play a high amount of PK monsters. So you can still dump your PK monsters. So yeah, guys, that was the combo video. If you guys are very interested in learning more about our channel, just make sure you subscribe. Like, give a huge shout out to all the patrons who subscribe and are still rocking with us to this day. Um, make sure you stay tuned for the 2,000 subscriber giveaway because it's going to be insane. Once again, guys, this is Hamza from Method Gaming, signing out. Peace.